This is a nice and healthy Echeveria Violescence compact form. Beautiful sort of dark pink. It's almost like the PVN color. This is fairly dry, but the plant itself, if I touch it, it is sort of soft. I'm going to compare this one with this one. This is actually the same plant. Can you see the difference? Uh, okay, so just so I'm going to come closer, come a little closer. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. So I uh, just point this out. So this one is really, really dry. This one with the other one that I'm touching with my thumb. Okay, I just drop a leaf. Okay, this one is sort of nice and plump. And this is how you tell between a hydrated and a dehydrated succulent. But how do we water a dehydrated succulent? This is a very dry looking Echeveria cubic frost and I haven't watered it for a long time. You can see all the leaves are drying up. The center is still good, nice and plump, but the outside is all dry. And I actually saw a little bit of baby inside growing. Hang on, wait a minute. There you go. There's a little pup inside. Look at that. Hello, I don't know if it's got, oopsie, it's got roots already. There you go, it's got roots, okay, and also a tiny little mealybug. So can you see the little mealybug over here, that white fluffy bit? That is a mealybug, okay. Now, gone. I just inspect, yep, gone, okay, it's probably already dead anyway. So now, I'm just going to inspect if there's mealy bugs, none. Uh, I'm going to put this one back here. And first of all, I have to get a little scoopy thing. Okay, I got my little water scoopy thing here that I was using a while ago, but anyway. So I'm just going to pour this into this poor thirsty succulent. You can also opt to use a little syringe to water them so you don't get the leaves of your succulent wet. In case it's all wet tomorrow when I show you. So you can still see that's wrinkle, wrinkle leaves. And so now I'm just going to leave that overnight. And we'll check it tomorrow, see what happens to this little dry poor Echeveria cubic frost. So that is our cubic frost and over here is a Kalankoe that I've been soaking for a couple of hours. So this is my Kalankoe Black Widow and look it's got little uh, scrawny looking plant but anyway uh, all creatures big and small I like them all but anyway this one now has been really really dry it's probably absorbed uh, a bit more water but um, it's getting heavy now so two three hours I think it's soaking here and okay so now I'm just gonna order this just to show you the bubbles see if you can see the air bubbles over there in the corner that means it's still got some air pocket inside it and uh, dry spots so it hasn't completely absorbed all the water so I'm just going to leave that in there till tomorrow until it's absorbed as much water as it can already and also we'll check on our Echeveria cubic frost so my cubic frost has now been soaking in this water for about two days and it has plumped up so the base uh, the bottom leaves and the second one so compare to the other ones how it looked before and also I've been soaking this Porto Lacaria or elephant's bush for three days this one because this one was really really dry as well so now it's all plumped up so I think she's ready 
to be taken out of the water and also my uh, lady's fingers is krasulag so this one now is all nice and plump as well and that is ready to be taken out as well but I'll still leave it for uh, for today and I'll put them away at the end of the day. So this is now a week later and my cubic force is all nice and plump and let's go check out the baby. Where did you go? Okay, let's see what happened to the baby. Oh, look at that. A little spider is living under the baby, so the baby's still good. I'm sorry, spider. You're gonna die. Okay, sorry. Okay, we put you back the soil. I mean, the, the, the gravel. And look at that. Little baby cubic frost. So I have, I'm going to put this away now. And look how dry the baby as well. The leaves, but it doesn't matter. So now that it's got roots, I can now put this in my growing area or my propagating area. This is my Echeveria Lawi soaking in sea salt solution overnight. So trying to avoid watering the, the leaves. Okay, look at that. So they are beautiful, <laughs> but they are high maintenance. <laughs> Lowy is like, I don't even want to touch it because, okay, so that one is, oh, it's just so delicate looking. But anyway, there's still a bit of wrinkly bit here. At the back here, see, look, I touch it and then now the farina's come off. The bottom, yep, getting harder, yep. Ooh, there's a dry leaf in there, so I better leave it. That's actually overlooked. I put it away somewhere, tuck it underneath, and I just found it yesterday. And the leaves went all wrinkly in the bottom, but then now they're plump up, see. Look at that, so those are wrinkly the lines. Got some wrinkled. So now it's straightening out its crinkle. Isn't that beautiful? This is now the Chivaria Lawi that I soak for a couple of days. And 20 days later, the flowers are even showing up. And do you remember the plant at the opening of the video? This is the same plant seven months later and it's now flowering so it has confirmed my suspicion that this is actually a Graptopetalum purple haze it is still in the same pot the leaves has now gone smaller but the colors are just so beautiful and the form has become more compact. Maybe the lady who gave it to me was meant to say Graptopithalum purple haze compact form. But then again, there's no such thing as a compact form purple haze, except this ones. In saying that, would you like to see the dried up one? This is now the wrinkly dried up one after I haven't watered it for seven months. So let's compare the size. The less water it receives, the smaller the plant gets, the more the color intensifies. Isn't that beautiful? So now I have successfully bonsified my Graptopithalum purple haze.